My mom wanted me to be a truck driver because <laughs> that would mean I'd make $24,000 a year if I went to Truck Masters. And that would be twice what my father made. And she thought that would happen. But something inside of me said, I don't want to drive a truck. There's something else that matters more to me. And I decided I was not going to go for money instead of passion. And uh, the rewards have been pretty amazingly better than being a truck driver. It's not bad being a truck driver. It's just not what I was after. And I, I look back, and one of the things that helped me was my original teacher, Jim Rohn, who was a personal development speaker I went to hear when I was 17. He said something the first time I heard him, and he said, you know, it's really simple. If you want life to change, you got to change. If you want life to be better, you've got to get better. It's the only way it happens. And luck will show up for people and it'll leave them. But if you're constantly improving who you are and what you give, game over. When people ask me, what does it take to be happy? I always tell them one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. Even if you're not where you want to be yet, if you're on the road, if you're improving, if you're making progress, you're going to love it. You're going to feel alive. On the other hand, it doesn't matter how successful you are, if you stop growing, you start dying inside. I've always had this belief. If you want to be successful at anything in life, never leave the sight of setting a goal without doing something that commits you to fulfillment. If you get, a, you're in state, right, when you do something. While you're in state, that's the time to commit yourself to something that makes you follow through. So I'd call somebody up, I'd schedule something, I'd lock in the next meeting, I'd sign up for the class, I'd enroll the guy who was going to mentor me, I'd set the meeting with a mastermind of people I met, I did something so that whatever I committed to, there was something when I went home that would pull me there. It's structure. This could be the greatest time you ever live if you control what you focus on, if you find a more empowering meaning, and if you decide to model the actions of those who succeeded before you. It can be the best financial time, the best emotional time, the best spiritual time of your life, but you better take control of your state. And if you think you're going to do it just by today, you're wrong. You're going to need to get yourself some rituals. Right now, every one of you in this room is controlled by your rituals. I don't just mean this one. I mean every morning you get up. I know your body. I can look at your body right now, and I can guess your rituals. Some of you, your rituals to work out five times a week, I can see it clearly. Four to six times a week, it's obvious. Because you couldn't look like that if you didn't do that. Some form of workout. I don't care if it's walking, lifting, whatever. Some of you, it's obvious that lifting weights is part of it. You can see it by that man's muscles. I know, I know what his rituals are. Because your life comes from your rituals. And if you don't develop the ritual, you're kidding yourself. How many agree with me on this? Raise your hand and say, I. And there are rituals that put you in state, and there are rituals that take you out of state. But if you've got what you know that focus, the target, and you got the toolbox, and you're still not getting what you want, it's because you got inner conflicts. That's the third pillar. You've got to resolve your inner conflicts. Because that, as I try to explain to you, 80% of success in anything is your psychology, and 20% is the mechanics. So those inner conflicts are when you take two steps forward, you pull three steps back, right? When you say, boy, I'm totally committed to this, but you don't follow through. This is my expertise, the why guy part. Why? Why do you keep saying you want this? You have crystal clarity, you have the tools, and you're still not getting it? There's a conflict in you. Align your life with what is most important. And then once you are in a position where you're aligned, guess what you'll do? Take action. You won't even have to work out. When everything's in alignment, there's nothing pulling you away, boom, you go for it. Progress comes when you tell yourself the truth and you're able to feel the uncertainty and take action anyway. The thing that stops us all is fear. It's no surprise. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown, fear of not looking good. And that fear we could translate into the simple thing of uncertainty. Now, when you look at someone who's incredibly successful, you look at someone who's truly a leader in their life or in their field, the one thing they have in common is they exude this sense of certainty. Now, where does that come from? Is it inborn? Are they lucky? Are things just going their way? No, great leaders know how to step in the uncertainty and bring the certainty to the situation. Most people in life, we really feel like the level of stress in our life comes to how much of life do you feel like you control or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? 
It's very easy to have those events start to take control unless we take control of what's between our ears, our own mind. You see, what you and I focus on massively affects how we feel, whether we're thriving or surviving. If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. It won't even matter if you're you know, taking antidepressants. If you keep focusing on what you can't control, what's missing from your life, you're going to feel depressed still. You can take as many antidepressants as you want. Focus equals power. If you want to thrive, you got to focus on what you can control. you got to focus on the difference you can make. you got to focus on what's already in your life that you're grateful for. So you've got to find a story that's going to empower you to act. A story that's going to get you to find the breakthrough. Because otherwise, with a lousy story, you'll never find the strategy. Or you'll come up with a reason why it's too expensive, you can't get there, you can't access it. Or you'll even get the strategy and then half-ass apply it just so you can reward your story that says it doesn't work as I tried it. Resourcefulness is the ultimate resource. And if you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time. That's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the fucking island, burn your fucking boats. And you will take the island because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. But most of us give ourselves a way out and that's why we don't have what we want. I was thinking about where this journey began for me, my desire to serve. You know, every day before I get on stage, I have I do this thing to whip myself into a peak state, and then my last words are, use me, Lord. You know, it's, I just, I, that's my prayer. And uh, every day, my goal is to be a blessing in people's lives. Just do more, give more, share more, create more. What, what you need will be there. It's like air. Yeah. You don't stop to think about when you take a breath, whether it'll be there or not. It's always going to be there. Yeah. You just got to do your part.